Hey guys, RGP here. Uh, today I am making a video on some upgrades I've actually made to my SATA modded uh, PlayStation 2. And we're also going to be taking a look inside of my console to show you what exactly I have plugged in. So right now we're going to just take off the back. I'll get to those little uh, lights on the front. Um, but you're going to see how exactly I have this set up. And now before you ask any questions, oh, what is that? That looks like a hard drive. It's actually not a hard drive. This is actually a Star, uh, StarTech uh, 3.5 uh, to 2.5 adapter, so that way I can put my SSD in my PlayStation 2 without it rattling around and disconnecting every two seconds every time I touch my console. Um, and I'll actually show you how this works real quick. Um, there is a little latch here on the back. Uh, if you take a look as this little thing, you're going to be kind of careful with these. Um, I'm going to leave an Amazon link in the, dis um, the description. So if you do uh, are, are interested in something like this for your PlayStation 2, you'll be able to find it. It's not an affiliate link or anything like that. It's just um, an easy way for you to put your PS2 hard drive in there without... Uh, I think I saw a video of some guy filling up his hard drive bay with like cloth and cotton and stuff. So his hard drive wouldn't rattle around in there, but anyway, um, back to this, um, we're going to take a look and open this up. Gotta be a little bit careful because it's kind of spring-loaded, so if I let go too quickly, it'll shoot out at me. But you can see, this is my latest addition to my PS2. It's a Samsung 750 Evo. Now, this isn't for increased speeds over my Crucial. No, this, I got this for the uh, storage size. Now, I was uh, running low on space. Uh, my PlayStation 2 collection has grown a bit, and I'll actually show you that real quick. And you're going to see some other games and stuff I have over there, but yeah, I got uh, more PS2 games. It's kind of blurry. My camera is not liking the light outside, but uh, I have a bunch of PS2 games, PS4 games, PS3 games, and I actually just got the... Uh, Mega Dimension Neptunia VR game, limited edition, because I'm a big fan of the, that series. Um, but back to my uh, PlayStation 2. I'm going to put this back in here real quick. Get that out of the way. And then I'm going to have you guys take a look at my IDE, well, not IDE adapter, but uh, my SATA modified one. Now, the difference between... These and the uh, the Chinese ones is, uh, you'll notice there's this empty slot right here from where I actually removed the little power connector because you actually do need that uh, to remove that in order to um, modify your uh, network adapter. And also, most of the time, the, uh, the Chinese SATA adapters that they sell on eBay, uh, your Ethernet and uh, phone line ports will not work. Um, these are, however, on mine are fully functional. They work perfectly fine. No issues whatsoever. Um, and I can even play games online uh, with my friends using Xlink Kai if I really want to. Um, but uh, yeah, this is the adapter. Now we're going to take a look at the front of my console. And I'm actually going to elaborate a little bit more of what's going on right up here. So the... Uh, these are actually the official Katana, officially licensed Katana controller, uh, wireless controller adapters. And basically, I can take them out with one hand. Oh, it's fine. Though. I'm not too worried about it. But basically, yes, they, uh, they, they have these little blue lights on them, and they look kind of cool. They, uh, they blink, uh, and they, like, when the controller's synced up to them, they, uh, they stay a solid blue color. Um, they look pretty sweet. Basically, it just allows me to play my PS2 without having wires strung all over my uh, room. Uh, but uh, they're pretty cool. Um, they work great, just as good as a PS2 controller. Um, the buttons are a little mushy, um, but other than that, I really had no problem with them. And uh, my latest edition, you'll notice, oh, where, where is all your memory cards? Well, I actually found a great solution. Um, so I was at a used video game store the other day, and they actually had this on sale for $5.99. And I was like, holy crap, there's no way this is real, and it actually is not real. This is a fake Chinese one. 
Uh, but uh, if you go into the browser, it actually shows up as like 122,000 kilobytes or whatever uh, in the storage. Uh, and also, like, all my games save fine. I never had a problem with it. Um, the only issue I've had with it so far is uh, my Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 3 game. Uh, it will not load the profile from it directly when you first start up the game, but if you go into the options and manually load your save file, then it works fine. Um, I am going to do a video, uh, well actually it's going to be all one video, it's all going to be in this video, of uh, me basically booting up stuff and loading things off my hard drive again. Um, and this time I'm actually picking games that I know take forever. Um, I'm going to be loading uh, Turok Evolution and uh, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, both of those games, at least for me personally. When I loaded those originally from their discs back when I was, uh, let's see here, four or five, they would take forever. Um, but I am going to put this back together, and we're going to plug this into my TV and boot it up and get my games loaded. And I'm also using OpenPS2 load this time, so maybe it'll load faster. I had some other um, people tell me that oh, um, OpenPS2 loader is faster, um, besides the... Uh, blinking different color lights when you start up the games. I don't really have a problem with it. Uh, but uh, seizure warning to anyone that is going to watch this next part. Um, when the games boot up, it flashes different colors rapidly. So uh, I would look away from the screen for like 10 seconds or something uh, while I'm doing that or just stop the video there because I don't want you to have a seizure over while me loading a PS2 game up. All right, um, I'm going to cut to me booting up my PS2 and we're going to be good to go. Here and we are back. Um, I'm about to boot up my uh, PS2 and show off uh, its boot up time, I guess, from the hard drive. Well, not hard drive, my uh, SSD, since I have installed uh, free hard drive loader into it or free hard drive boot, whatever it's called. Uh, but yeah, it is uh, the latest version as of the 20th of this month. So we're gonna see how that goes. I have it all customized, and well, it's not really that customized. It's more just it's green instead of blue. I like green, so I set it to be green. Yep, the uh, Sony Computer Entertainment logo sits there on this screen for a second, and then it goes right into the game. Well, not into the game, into the menu thing. You guys know what I mean. Now it's nice and booted up, and you'll notice my lights aren't moving. That is because my clock battery died, and I just got to replace it. No big deal. Um, you'll notice I'll have, I have have less games installed. Uh, I just have not got around to reinstalling my entire collection. Uh, I've also gotten more games in, so it's just going to take me forever to because I'm going to be installing them from their discs with HD loader, uh, 0.8C. Um, but, yep, this is uh, OpenBSD loader. We're booting up Turok now. Now, it's all, this is also another game where there's one little quirk of using my uh, my hard drive, uh, it, I mean my memory card. Uh, it will say, oh, there's no memory card, but if I just retry, it works fine the second time. And then we're booting into the game. It's going to play that funny little cutscene. Um, I'm probably going to skip that, actually, because I just want to get into the game and load it up for you. That way, I'm not talking your guys' ear off for a zillion years. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, that's how it looks on the PS2. It looks pretty great, uh, actually, at least with my component cables. But uh, we're going to skip that. Yeah, notice it's, like, loading forever. Well, actually, well, it normally would. It's loading decently quick now. Uh, but you'll notice that this game still takes a little while to uh, boot into the game because for some reason they want it to take forever, I guess. But I think it takes about a minute and a half almost for this to actually load into the mat, uh, like to the level. Um, but on the SSD and the hard drive, it does load faster, of course. But on the SSD, I think it takes around, I think, 10 seconds or so. It's not, it's like super quick. But uh, yeah, this is Turok Evolution on my SSD. Looks amazing, even though the SSD has improved graphics, but it does make the game load quicker. The most optimized game on the PS2, everybody. 
All right, we're going to reset the PS2 real quick, and we're going to boot up uh, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, one of my personal favorite games. And uh, honestly, it's a very underrated. Not many people really talk about that game, but they are amazing. The, P the PS2 Harry Potter games are fantastic, um, which is why I have almost all of them. I'm missing Goblet of Fire and I think Order of the Phoenix. But other than that, I have all of them. At least, I honestly think probably the first three Harry Potter games on the PS2 were probably the best. That and uh, the and the Game Boy Color version of uh, the Harry Potter games were great too. They were nice Final Fantasy style RPGs. Okay, PS2 loader, and then we're gonna boot up Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, a game that also takes like. Well, it takes usually about 30 seconds or more to load from the disc, but on the SSD, you'll notice it loads much quicker. Uh, that's not the right one. Uh, this one right here. Yeah, uh, guys, if you have, like, epilepsy, I'm really sorry. I, I, I think I warned you guys at the beginning of the video. If not, I'll just make sure I co comment down below or put it in the video title. I'm also filming this with my lights off, so I, uh, that way, like, it's not so much glare, because, like, there's a lot of glare in my room when I have my lights on my TV, because my TV screen's very glossy, but, uh, that's my, uh, my PS2 with my wireless uh, controller dongle thingies. Uh, you'll notice that actually kind of looks like the PS4 Pro with those little lights on it, which is pretty interesting. I wonder if Sony did that intentionally. Okay, we're going to skip this cutscene and load into the game. I think I have a save file, if I remember right, that's like in the Hogwarts school. Yes, I think I think it's outside. Um, if I'm not outside, because the uh, the grounds at Hogwarts are the ones that takes like the longest to load. Uh, like being outside of the castle because it's like the biggest environment. It takes forever to load, so um, it'll be a good benchmark uh, of the SSD. Yep, see, like it loads way faster than it does from the disc. Um, but yeah, these games are just so underrated. They're fantastic games. I love going around collecting wizard cards and such. We're gonna go back into the castle and have it load there too but it shouldn't take very long at all yeah see it doesn't take very long at all I remember waiting on this game to load on my old slim PS2 from the disc it was just like taking forever and then sometimes I would just kinda go off somewhere else and go do something like go get like food or something while I was waiting for this game to load but, uh, throwback from my childhood right here, guys. Fantastically underrated game. No one really talks about these games anymore, but they were great. Probably one of the best, uh, based off the movie games, at least in my opinion. Um, but, yeah, this is, uh, my upgraded, new, and improved PlayStation 2. Um, if you'd like to see any more videos about my PS2 or have any questions, feel free to ask me down in the comment section, and I will be sure to get back to you guys. Alrighty, you guys have a good day, and I will see you in the next video.